Let's study Parshat Ki Tavo with the commentary of the Ramban, as we have been throughout the year at Orzarua. He's our Parshan Hashana, our commentator of the year. And we begin right from the beginning of the Parsha, chapter 26 of the book of Deuteronomy. V'haya, and it will be. Ki tavo el ha'aretz asher Adonai lohecha noten lecha nachala. When you get to the land, you enter the land that God has given you as an inheritance, vireshta, and you inherit it, or you possess it, you take that land and you possess it for yourselves, vayashavta ba, and you dwell in it, or you settle it. You build it up, you build up the infrastructure of the land when you get there. Vilakachta. Take from the first of every fruit of the land. Any of the produce you grow, any of the fruit you yield. Asher tavi me'artzecha, asher Adonai Elohecha noten lach, v'samta v'atene v'halachta el hamakom asher yuchar Adonai Elohecha, so here's how it reads. Take vilakachta from the first of all the fruits of the land, of the ground in this case. So if we want to be more specific about what the verse is commanding, take from the fruits of the ground, the first of the fruits of the ground. Asher tavi me'artzacha, that you bring from your land. Asher Adonai Lohecha noten lach, that, that land which God has given you, v'samta v'atene, and you put it in a basket. V'halachta el kom. And then you're going to go and you're going to take this offering to the place where God's name will rest. So let's picture this for a moment. Imagine in your mind, what's that basket look like, that ancient basket that held the first fruits that were going to be the fruits of the offering. So, uh, potentially, we could see that basket as a storage place, right? Some kind of storage container that has to be pr protective enough to keep that part of the harvest. And you take this basket and you prepare it. And the question is, where do you put it? One question is, where do you put it? You might think that that basket could go into an outdoor shed. It could go into a special location, uh, lean to outdoors, something that will protect it from the elements uh, or animals, but that you should leave it there. But the Ramban has an explanation about what the words asher tavi are doing in verse two of the Parsha. These two words that you shall bring, even though they're connected in a simple sense of the text, to the word me'artzecha, the parallel to ha'adama, the ground and the land, that you'll bring comes to teach us something a little bit different than what was said before. The first part of verse 2 is you're going to bring from the first of the produce of the ground. Second part is that you brought from the land. Where did you bring them from? Not exactly only the land here, but the Ramban will say, Tam The reason why that you have to have both parts of the verse is that shetikach mereshid hapri asher tavi alabayit. That you'll take of the first fruits of the ground and you'll bring them from the household. You'll bring them from your house. When you prepare your basket and you've got the first fruits, you're going to bring those first fruits from inside your home. So back to verse one, you receive the land as an inheritance. You actively inherited it. And then via Shavta, and you are now going to dwell in it or build it up. What do you build up? You build up not only the fields and, and make for whatever kind of agricultural 
administration that you need in order to bring your fruits, you need to create a home, right? And that home is central to your dwelling in the land. But instead of just leaving the first fruits of the earth in the field itself or outside in some kind of container or setting it aside, you actively have to bring the first fruits into the home. Now, what's the chidush? What's, what's so interesting about that as a methodology for offering this offering? You might think, okay, well, it has to be protected. Well, we could create something to protect it outside. There's, there's uh, an essential lesson about gratitude embedded here. Scripture does instruct that we should separate the fruit while it's in the field. But one calls it Bikurim in the field and then brings it inside the house. And by bringing this gift inside the house, we set it down right in the space in which we live. We bring this gift to God, which is not our own any longer, inside our property, meaning we bring God into our inner dwelling, into our private space, if you will. It's no longer out there in the field. It's internal to the Jewish home. And by bringing that gift inside the home and by seeing that gift in our home and by knowing that basket is set to be brought to the place where God's name will dwell, links our bait, our private dwelling, with the bait shel Hashem, with the home of God where God's name dwells. That's a powerful connection. That's a powerful bridge. And that raises the level of the gratitude we have for that part of the produce and the yield that we eat within our homes as well. The Ranban's teaching comes to say that the appropriate vessel for transport, the, the, the basket, is actually inside the home. It's not even outside in the field. That he puts it inside a vessel to transport it to the house of God's choice. That is the, the temple in its time, or the, or the place where God's name will dwell before that. Perhaps the basket was filled out in the field and then it's put into the right wagon. Perhaps it wasn't in the exact right basket and one transfers it in the home to make the gift appear a little bit nicer, like we wrap a gift. That living with the gift inside one's place allows one to feel the greater gratitude of knowing that God's presence dwells both within the private dwelling and, of course, the house of God, where you'll bring the ultimate tzedakah. Shabbat shalom.